Hi all, this is Ratna Kishore. Welcome to the next video on Julia programming language. In this video, I will cover the topic of decision making, which includes comparison operators, logical operators, ternary operator, as well as if else statement. Let's start the topic now. Let's start with the numeric comparison operators. These comparison operators are used to compare two values. After the comparison, these operators results in boolean value. That is either true or false. We have different comparison operators to check equality, inequality, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to on two values. To explain the use of these comparison operators, I am considering two variables x and y. Then I am using different comparison operators here to compare these two values. If I run this cell, I got the boolean value as the result of these comparison operators based on the values present in both x and y variables. Since here the x is having the value 100, y is having the value 50 in them, we got false from the equality operator, true from the inequality operator, false from the less than operator, false from the less than or equal to operator, true from the greater than operator, true from the greater than or equal to operator. Next chaining the comparison operators. Comparison operators can be chained to compare multiple values at a time. If you observe this chaining of comparison operators which will return a true because 1 is less than 2 that is true. 2 is greater than 0 0.5 that is also true, 0 0.5 is less than or equal to 0 0.5 that is also true. Then finally we got true as the result of this comparison operator chaining. Here if I consider the another chaining of comparison operators we got false because 1 greater than 2 which is false finally we got false here. So next type of operators that I am considering are the logical operators. So the logical operators are used to make decisions by combining multiple conditions. Here the logical operators also results a boolean value that is either true or false based on the combination of conditions it is having. Here we have three logical operators. The first one is to perform the negation and the second one is to perform the short circuiting AND operation and the third one is to perform short circuiting OR operation. Then what is short circuiting AND operation? When a condition is failed, then the short circuiting AND operator returns a false without evaluating the next conditions. Then what about the short circuiting OR operator? When a condition is satisfied, then the short circuiting OR operator returns a true without evaluating the next conditions. To explain the use of logical operators, I am taking three variables A with 5 as the value, B with 4 as the value and C with minus 3 as the value. If we consider the first println statement where we have a condition a greater than b actually which returns true because of this negation operator we will get a false from this print statement. Then if I consider the next println statement where I have two conditions a greater than b, b greater than c which are combined with and operator then if you observe the a greater than b which is satisfied then b greater than c will be evaluated which is also satisfied then we will get a true out of this display statement. Then finally I am considering the third statement where two conditions are combined with short circuiting or operator. If you observe the first condition a greater than b is satisfied then automatically short circuiting or operator will return a true without evaluating the next condition. Then if you display that you will get a true. We can also use the result of these functions in various decision makings. Here the first ascertain function I am considering is a EZA which takes two arguments. The first argument would be either a variable or an object and the second argument would be the type. If the variable is of the given type it returns true. If the variable is not of the given type it will return a false. Here I am considering EZA function with 56 as a value here. 
since I am using a 64 bit machine 56 would be obviously a 64 bit integer type then I got true for the first statement and false for the second statement. So the next function I am considering is use numeric which will take a character as input argument and test whether the character is a numeric value or not. Here I am using each numeric function with character A. Since it is not a numeric value, it returns a false. And then I am using each numeric function with a character 8. That character is a numeric value, then automatically it will return a true. Next we have is even function to check whether the given integer is even number or not. If the given number is even number, it returns true, otherwise it returns a false. And also we have another function to check whether the given number is odd or not. And the next function is is power 2, which checks whether the given number is integer power of 2. If you observe in these examples, 8 is integer power of 2 because this is a 2 power 3, then we got true. But 9 is not integer power of 2, then we got false here. And the next function is is finite, which returns true for the finite number as input and returns false if the infinite number as input. Note that inf is the constant we have in Julia to represent infinite value. Here the next function we have is is inf which checks whether the given number is infinite. If I run this cell I got false if the number is finite and true if the number is infinite. Next we have a function to check whether the given value is not a number. Then for 9 we got false as the result of this function and for nin we got true out of this function. And finally is 0 is a function to check whether the given number is 0. For non-zero value it returns a false and for zero value it returns a true. Next I am considering ternary operator which will have a condition and then a question mark after that expression a a colon and then expression b first condition will be evaluated if the condition is satisfied that means it returns true then expression a will get evaluated if the condition returns false then expression b will get evaluated now i am using this ternary operator to check whether the given number is even or odd for that I am using a variable num with 50 integer. Then I am using is even function to check whether that number is even or not. If that number is even then is even function returns true then this println statement will get executed that is expression a in our case. If this is even function returns false then expression b in our case println odd number will be executed. If I run this cell we got even number because 50 is even number. If I change this to 501, then we got odd number. So finally, in this video, I am considering if else statement. Here, adder will have if and then condition. After that, the body of that if statement. And that if statement ends with a end keyword. In the same way, we can use if else statement as well. For that I am considering an example to find out the largest number among the three values. Here we have a program by using if else statement to check the largest among these three values where each if statement ends with a keyword end and this is the inner if else statement then it is ended with end keyword and we have this entire if else if else statement then this is the end keyword for that entire statement. If I run this cell then I got c is the largest number because c is 130 we have. If I change this 130 to 13 if I run this again then among 3 b is the largest number. So that is all guys in this way we can use various constructs in Julia programming language to take decisions. That is all for this video I will meet you soon with a new content.